So, the New York Giants defeat the Minnesota Vikings 31-24. to There goes one of my Super Bowl picks. I picked the Vikings to have a chance to make it to the Super Bowl. And, of course, they lost in the first round of the playoffs and proved that they cannot be trusted. Now, I know that this video is coming out late and I don't really care. But I'm pretty sure that after Sunday, you know, the next day, everybody on ESPN and, I don't know, Fox Sports... What else? NFL Network, you know, all these media outlets were killing Kirk Cousins, I'm sure. You know, killing Kirk Cousins and because he threw the ball to TJ Hawkins on a fourth and eight play. And I'm not trying to defend Kirk Cousins for that for that decision, but <laughs> it's funny. I I got curious as to what the media would say, and I can only take so much. I'm gonna listen to the media or anybody speak sports particularly football because all they do for the most part is just blame it on the quarterback and it drives me nuts so i turned into first take and Stephen a and michael irvin troy eggman and you got marley Kroen on set and they're in tampa Stephen a is talking about the he's talking about the minnesota vikings and he basically says that he wasn't really a big believer in minnesota because they got a steamroll against dallas and then they got steamroll against green bay they should have lost to buffalo which you could, you could make that argument, but they made the plays necessary to win that game. Buffalo couldn't close the door on Minnesota, and Minnesota was able to capitalize on the mistakes. So I don't want to hear, oh, you know, they should have lost. Well, Buffalo should have put them away, so blame Buffalo for that. So he's touching on that and kind of giving everybody else blame, but then he immediately goes to Kirk Cousins. He immediately shifts his focus to Kirk Cousins. He kind of he doesn't really blame anybody else he just in particular he just states that they got blown out against dallas blown out against green bay should have lost against buffalo but then immediately shifts his focus to kirk cousins and now that i've seen this game i'm thinking to myself okay people are killing kirk cousins or were killing kirk cousins but what about the defense in my video where I had picked the Minnesota Vikings to make it to the Super Bowl. I talked about how they get off to these fast starts. So, first drive of the game, Kirk Cousins completes a short pass to Justin Jefferson for 10 yards. Dalvin Cook runs up the middle for 9 yards. He runs up the middle again for 2 yards. Kirk throws a 10-yard pass to Justin Jefferson. Dalvin Cook runs up the middle for 3 yards. Kirk completes a short middle pass to Adam Thielen for 13 yards. Then he makes another completion to Justin Jefferson for 5 yards. Kirk completes a short throw to Dalvin Cook for 6 yards. And I had mentioned this, like, they get off to these hot starts. They have games where they get off to these hot starts where Kirk is immediately in rhythm. Dalvin Cook is slashing through the middle. Everyone is in sync, and they just come out like gangbusters. Uh, where the, where the hell was I? Dalvin Cook runs up the middle for two yards. Kirk completes a short pass to TJ Hawkinson for four yards. He completes a pass to Justin Jefferson for no gain. It was ruled a touchdown, but but it was overturned. Then Kirk Cousins does a, does a QB sneak for one yard. Vikings score, they immediately go up seven to nothing. Now, the offense gets off to a fast start, but the defense also gets off to a fast start as well. Well, the Giants respond daniel jones completes a 13 yard pass to richie james daniel jones scrambles for seven yards and then threw a nice stiff arm daniel jones completes a pass to the deep right side of the field to Darius slayton for 22 yards daniel jones scrambles for 15 yards oh this is when he threw the stiff arm on patrick peterson then saquon barkley runs for 28 yards for a touchdown so the giants immediately strike back and watching this game every pass that daniel jones completed across the middle the receivers seem to be wide open well not every pass but in the beginning of the game there was no one around these receivers and they're just going across the middle of the field and greg olsen is breaking it down i like greg olsen i think he's a great commentator i learned a lot from him when he's commentating and he's talking about how the giants are gashing minnesota's too deep defense by having the receivers run across the middle doing crossing routes have one guy go deep on a post route or a deep crossing route and then have someone else come underneath and then the guy going up the field on that deep crossing route will cause the minnesota vikings to devote that attention to him and allow the guy who's running underneath to be free and it just seemed like the defense could not stop the giants at all the giants had 142 yards rushing on the ground they gave up 301 yards through the air just really couldn't do anything i felt they didn't really establish themselves throughout the game and that was one of my fears going into this game so Darius smith 
a guy who had 10 sacks this season and 24 hits on the QB. In this game, he only had three combined tackles, two solo tackles, one assist tackle, one tackle for loss, zero hits on the QB, and no sacks. He's had performances like this before in the postseason, where he shows up in the regular season but doesn't show up in the postseason. Why isn't he getting any flack? He's one of their star pass rushers. There was a play after the Giants had scored I believe it was their first drive. On third and one, they, the Minnesota Vikings try to run a jet sweep and have Justin Jefferson throw it across the field to Kirk Cousins, which was stupid. <laughs> Why do coaches make things so difficult? It's third and one, you try to run a jet sweep and have Justin Jefferson throw it across the field, try to get the defense to commit to him and then throw it across the field to Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, have him try to get the first down. Well, that didn't work. It, it blew up immediately in their faces. That was stupid. Okay, and then there was a, a play. I'm going back to Zadarius Smith where the Giants had scored, but he's complaining about the offensive lineman jumping too early, so he stops rushing. Keep rushing, dog. Don't complain. They're not going to blow the whistle. Just keep rushing. Like, these players always got to cry about something, and then they cry at the wrong time. But that's Kirk Cousins' fault. Let's not talk about that. That's Kirk Cousins' fault. And again, I'm not trying to defend Kirk Cousins' terrible decision to throw it to TJ Hawkinson. Me, personally, I thought overall he played well. I thought. The defense didn't step up. They had a chance to get the Giants off the field on a 31 situation. They do a jet sweep to Matt. Brita. Eric Kendricks has a chance to get him on the ground. Daniel Hunter has a chance to get him on the ground. And then he eventually plows through, I believe it was, I believe it was Harrison Smith. He gets the first down. So the defense didn't do anything, in my opinion. I don't think they did a good job. Even though the Giants scored like 31 points, they stopped them uh, a few times in this game. It just felt like they didn't do anything in this game. Daniel Jones, 24 for 35, 301 yards, two touchdowns. He was sacked three times. He ran the ball 17 times, 78 yards. He was fantastic, and he showed as to why he is a franchise quarterback. I've always liked Daniel Jones. I know he gets shitted on by a lot of people when the Giants were having terrible seasons. Me, personally, I felt that he is a franchise quarterback. The Giants have a franchise quarterback. The problem with Daniel Jones is the Giants. He plays for what the Giants, working behind a terrible offensive line, working with average receivers. Evan Ingram was supposed to be, like, the the guy but he couldn't hold on to the football saquon barkley couldn't stay healthy and i think that's why oh yeah and um the coaching has been terrible so saquon barkley being healthy and giants having or seeming to have a stable structure at the head coaching position i think has really helped daniel jones in his progress during this season he was just on point the entire game i thought utilizing his legs utilizing all of his attributes you know i think daniel jones has a very nice deep ball i think he's always been very athletic very fast but people see him you know stumble and they see the giants record and they're like daniel jones is nothing special well, look at the team around him. Look what he's had to work with his entire career so far. So kudos to Daniel Jones. He is the franchise quarterback for the Giants. Shit, I would love to see him in a Falcons uniform. <sighs> Saquon Barkley, nine rushing attempts, 53 yards, two touchdowns. I thought he played well. I thought he played really well. Six targets, five receptions, 56 yards. Receiving, Darius Slayton, eight targets, four receptions, 88 yards. Isaiah Hodges, nine targets, eight receptions, 105 yards, one touchdown. This Giants offense showed up. Daniel Jones showed up. Like I said, I thought he was very good at utilizing his legs when he needed to, trying to buy time in the pocket. I was more impressed with his mobility and how he was able to use that to his advantage and show composure while being under center. And I was thinking to myself, isn't the Vikings gonna like try and spy him at some point? Aren't you gonna put Eric Kendricks, have him spy him? You know, your athletic linebacker, probably your best, well, probably your most athletic linebacker, or just have someone watch him, you know, on a obvious passing situation. But of course, I'm not a coach. I'm just a guy who likes to watch football and study it to the best of my abilities. Kirk Cousins, 31 completions, 39 attempts, 273 yards, two touchdowns. And he had that uh, QB sneak touchdown despite his fourth quarter blunder. I thought he played well overall. And I know stars are supposed to show up in big time situations, but I'm just saying that you can't just you can't just come away from a game, from a football game, and just be like, oh, it was Kirk Cousins' fault. What about the Giants? Huh? Give them some credit. They showed up and played. So I I don't care for this. Oh, you know, it's Kirk Cousins. He's got to do this. He's got to beat this guy. He's got to 
Man, shut up. It's a team sport. Uh, Justin Jefferson, nine targets, seven receptions, 47 yards. Yeah, pretty quiet day for the superstar wide receiver. Dalvin Cook, 15 attempts, rushing 60 yards, seven targets, six receptions, 10 yards. Um, I thought he was still good. TJ Hawkinson, 11 targets, 10 receptions, 129 yards. I thought he was phenomenal. Everybody else was pretty quiet. Uh, KJ Osborne did have a touchdown reception. Irv Smith Jr. had a touchdown reception. Also, someone dropped a pass from Kirk Cousins when he had pressure in his face. So, but of course, no one's going to talk about that. I believe it was Irv Smith Jr. who dropped the pass. And if he if he catches it, that'll that keeps the chains moving. So, yeah, it's stupid to blame one guy for a team loss, and I'll always stand by that. Daniel Jones is a franchise quarterback, and he finally, well, to me, he's always shown it, but to me, he finally showed the world what he's capable of, and the Giants, who knows? They may upset some people, you know? They may upset some people, so please like and subscribe. That is it. I am out.